So what are four things that the cloud industry got wrong over the last 15 years and I got right? Let's gloat about it. Well, welcome back to the uh, Cloud Insider channel, uh, where we talk about the truth of cloud computing and generative AI and how to make it work in the real world. My name is Dave Linthicum, I'm your host, author, speaker, B. List Geek, and here to talk to you about the realities of cloud computing, generative AI, and how to make all this stuff work in the enterprise today. So I hope everybody understood kind of the tongue-in-cheek uh, take uh, when doing this title. I thought it was kind of funny. But there are lots of things, I think, that we assume to be correct based on some of the things the, the cloud industry was telling us over the last 15 years of cloud computing that turned out to be wrong. And some of these are opinions that I held. And I think it's important to take a critical look at uh, you know what we got right in terms of leveraging this technology and also what we got wrong and how we can change our behaviors in the future to correct this and uh, be right more. That would be nice. So first thing, thank you very much for the uh, growth in the channel. I just uh, passed 15,000 subscribers. Never thought it'd get that big that quick. So you've been about 45 days into it. Appreciate everybody who told a friend and subscribed yourself and has been giving the encouragement to to keep up with this. And I'm I'm happy that it's there and I'm glad to speak with you guys every week on the realities of this stuff. And uh, I love the technology industry. I love working with people and I love the comments that you guys have left for me. Keep it up. So many of these points came from my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing, specifically chapter one, where I talked about some of the assumptions that we thought were correct uh, and were not, and uh, something things that the industry kind of led us to believe and turned out to be incorrect. Uh, and I've been a commentator in this space for over 15 years, believe it or not, had my InfoWorld blog, I think I'm going in my 13th, 14th year at this time. And uh, have a lot of uh, uh, experience in in, in trying to provide insights into where this stuff is going. And in some instances, I push back on the current wisdom in what the narrative was around the use of cloud computing, different aspects of it. And took some uh, arrows for that as well. Sometimes these were not uh, things that people uh, took kindly to when I push back on some of the values that people were pushing in cloud computing. But I think it's important that we look at one of the things we got right, as well as the things we got wrong. So we understand as we move forward with new technologies, in this case, things like generative AI, that we're taking a critical eye to things we're assuming now and understand that we can be wrong about a good many things. And it's okay to have a uh, a different opinion on how these things are working and how cloud computing works, how generative AI works, how technology works in general. And so the healthy discussion, the healthy conflict out there, I think that's a good thing. Probably don't have enough of that right now. But keep in mind, this is really about getting the discussion going in terms of what are some of the assumptions I think the industry made around leveraging cloud computing, what turned out to be the realities, and how we should adjust moving forward. So certainly why this is uh, in my latest book, I uh, wrote a lot of articles over the last 15 years, and I referenced them below. So I guess I brought the receipts uh, in terms of when I had these opinions and, and really kind of the logic behind it. Some things written back in, you know, 2000. Uh, uh, you know, 2011, 2012, uh, when we start, start first started writing and speaking about cloud computing, at least when I started to get into it in a much more larger way. Um, and you have to remember that there are many more things, I think, that we have uh, said in terms of the cloud industry narratives that that ended up being wrong. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I point out four of them here, but obviously there's more than four. I'm sure you can think of a few. And by the way, uh, put them down in the comments below. If you uh, if you uh, have uh, something that you think the cloud industry got wrong, some assumptions that were made in the past that turned out not to be true. I think it's going to be interesting to discuss that. So as I mentioned already, you know, some of this kind of came back on me. Um, a lot of times when I wrote an article about um, some uh, differences of opinion I had in terms of what the cloud narrative was and what the industry was saying versus what I thought the reality was, uh, those were some pushbacks that came back with uh, vendors calling up my editor, uh, contacting my employer, you know, looking to get me canceled, looking to get me fired, which is kind of weird. Because uh, you think about it, all we have is a difference of opinion, but also that tells me I was on to something if they were pushing back that way. Instead of uh, putting up a disagreement and putting up a logical argument, uh, they tried to get me shut down. So kind of keep that in mind as you go through this stuff. And certain opinions may make you, make you angry that you, don't, that you don't agree with. It's okay to have the discussion. 
as to what your opinion is and why your opinion differs from that of somebody else. And so I found some of this stuff kind of got nasty uh, in the past. Don't get as much of it today, but you know, at the time, certainly cloud computing was exploding. A lot of people were investing in the cloud computing technology. They had an they had a vested interest in terms of what the cloud narratives were. And if I was going against it, then they pushed back on me. And they pushed back on me by uh, trying to uh, get me fired or uh, get me deplatformed. Fortunately, none of that worked. I worked for great editors and great employers that were uh, uh, had trust in me that we were making the right decisions and coming to the right opinions, and it's okay to have a dis uh, disagreement in the industry. But you have to keep a, keep an eye out for that. There's still that kind of nastiness that goes on in the technology space. Certainly, now that we're looking at the rise of generative AI, I see a bit of that going on now. Notice that if you push back against something that goes to the popular narrative, that uh, people get upset and they don't want you to have that opinion. And I think it's perfectly fine that we have that kind of, uh, you know, that, those kind of discussions, as I mentioned earlier. We're only going to get better out of having these conversations and figuring out ways in which we can better, uh, better change our thinking, better change the opinions that we're coming up with, and better understand how this technology works and how to make it work uh, in particular scenarios. And having an open mind as to what all opinions are and how the technology should be leveraged. So let's go through the narratives that were uh, uh, prevalent uh, 15, 12 years ago, you know, back in 2009, 2010, 2011, when cloud computing first started to inflect and everybody was getting into uh, the mix of it. In other words, it was very much like generative AI today. The hype was starting to emerge and everybody was following the hype. So these were some of the uh, opinions that people had and some of the narratives that were out there. And the first one would be the cloud's primary benefit is CapEx versus OpEx. And so that's the argument that it's better to buy something as a service, in this case, cloud computing, because you're leveraging it as a utility. In other words, very much like we leverage our electricity companies and, and uh, water companies, things like that, uh, versus buying the asset. And, uh, you know, this was an argument that lots of people were making. And to be honest with you, it kind of, it kind of made sense to me at first. In other words, I understand that it's probably better for me to rent something as a service versus buying it. And that should be, that should allow me to get a, uh, get off a bit cheaper because obviously buying hardware and software, implementing in a data center, hiring people to maintain it, uh, is going to be expensive, uh, and leveraging it as a service. Like I was leveraging software as a service and some of the applications starting to merge at the time, things like storage and things like compute versus putting it in a data center seemed like it was going to be a logical benefit to me. Um, however, came to realize quickly that that wasn't always the case. In other words, it wasn't always a slam dunk in terms of uh, uh, OPEX over CAPEX, um, depending on how you modeled cost and how you modeled your scenario. So all of these things have to be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. So it never was CAPEX versus OPEX. We, we look at additional values of cloud computing, including the soft values, the ability to have agility, time to market compression, things like that. Uh, versus the hard savings, which are the cost savings from cloud computing. So those savings weren't necessarily guaranteed. And uh, in, in many cases, they weren't there. So uh, that narrative probably was not as true as people liked it to be at the time. And I did write and speak about it. And some people pushed back on that. But I think I was right. You know, all things said and done, if you look back at the 15 years and how people are leveraging cloud computing today and where people are finding the value, it's definitely not about CapEx versus OpEx, certainly not anymore. And kind of related to that was the cloud is always cheaper than on premises system. Notice I said premises. Um, so that, as we know now that uh, we're kind of looking at the cloud bills in 22 was, 2022 was kind of the epitome of this. People saw the fact that they were spending much more on leveraging cloud services than they were in some of the on premises systems. And so those systems, uh, made up of hardware. Well, that hardware has uh, been discounted a tremendous amount in the last 10 years. Uh, and cloud computing has either stayed the same or gotten a little bit more expensive. So we're finding that normally, generally speaking, cloud computing is going to be more expensive than traditional on-premises uh, things that is sit in a data center. Not always. Again, we have to take this on a case-by-case -case basis, but the narrative at the time, you know, 10, 15 years ago was that cloud computing is always going to be less expensive 
Uh, that's not the case. Sometimes it's less expensive. Sometimes we're able to find value in cloud computing over some of the traditional ways of deploying hardware and software. But it's not necessarily something you can say that's always going to be true. And so some people are able to find value in cloud because they're leveraging the value and other parameters besides just uh, operational costs. In other words, the ability to have agility, the ability to scale their systems, the ability to compress time to market. All those things can be a tremendous asset for many enterprises out there. But if we're just saying that cloud is always going to be cheaper than the on-premises systems, that's not going to be the case. And so that was proven to be true, pre proven not to be true. And that was the opinion I had at the time. And next would be um, the narrative that all applications and data sets will eventually be in the cloud. And that was kind of the... Uh, uh, battle cry uh, for the first five years of cloud computing that we're going this way anyway, you might as well make it work. And people were lifting and shifting and moving their data sets into the public cloud providers as quickly as they could. Um, that is not going to be the case. We certainly see that now. We're going to move to a heterogeneous platform, ubiquitous computing. We're going to run uh, applications and data sets on edge-based systems, uh, mobile-based computing, things that exist within a traditional data center, uh, co-location co providers, managed service providers, all those things are fair game for where you're going to run your application. I don't see us in a world where everything is going to move into a public cloud provider. We're probably going to hit a saturation point at a certain time where it just doesn't make sense for certain workloads and certain data sets to move into the cloud. They're uneconomically viable to move in those directions. So we're going to end up in a heterogeneous environment, ubiquitous environment. People are going to run their applications and data sets on whatever platforms that are optimized for those particular applications and data sets. And I think that's a good thing. We're not going to move everything into cloud. And the last one would be something I, I push back on pretty hard, that the cloud drives more simplicity. Uh, that is almost never going to be the case. Uh, I can understand why people came to that conclusion because we were taking things on very complex heterogeneous environments on hardware systems that we had to maintain that existed in data centers that we owned. And we move them into a single cloud provider. And therefore, the simplicity of doing that should make things easier for us. We don't have to deal with data center assets, things like that. Uh, that turned out not to be the case. Actually, the cloud made things more complex because people were leveraging uh, different services and cloud-based uh, cloud -based providers almost as silos. So they were using the cloud assets and as additive to the existing on-premises systems. And that turned out to be uh, just kind of adding more complexity. Very rarely are these systems shut down after analogs are moved into the cloud. And so it just became another platform to run. We had to deal with heterogeneity, uh, complexity associated with that. We had to deal with the number of applications, the number of silos that existed within enterprise. We're dealing with multi-cloud environments. We're dealing with edge-based environments. So things have exploded in terms of complexity, so much so that it's a hindrance to people being productive and bringing value back from the cloud assets these days. So simplicity wasn't, uh, wasn't part of it. Uh, and it was uh, complexity that we ended up to. And now we're battling the complexity right now. Well, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, let me know, what's, um, you know what narratives that you saw evolve in the last 15 years that you found out were not true. And there's many more that I mentioned here in this, uh, in this show. Uh, love to hear your thoughts on it. Maybe it's something I'll cover in a, later, in a later video. Also, don't forget about my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. Uh, they're signing up right now. That's going to start next month, um, uh, depending on when you listen to this video. Uh, so please check that out. Uh, the link's in, in the description as well. Also my book, uh, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing, check that out. That's where a lot of this stuff came from, uh, where I, where I highlighted the realities of cloud computing and certainly how we got things right in some instances, but got things wrong many times as well. Uh, don't forget my blog on InfoWorld. Don't forget my courses on LinkedIn Learning and, uh, check those out. So until next time, everybody stay safe. You guys take care. Bye-bye.